Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time I'm going to play with this Brühl and Kier type 1613 Octave filter set. And this is very, very special. I don't know if you can see the size. It is extremely solid and heavy. It's 2.1 kilos. So it's really, really heavy. So it's all a passive filter. I think it's from about 1966. They talk about in the manual of this one for uh, fill some uh, curve standards made in uh, 1966 or something like that. I don't know exactly if that is right about the the H. I spent quite a long time polishing and washing, so it looks more or less like new. You can see here it's nice and shiny. Yeah, I had to wash away some really nasty black dot here, and now I got a little scrape mark. So I don't know what is worse, but if it, if you take the light at another angle, then you don't see this nasty black dot anyway. And all sorts of paint and scratches is now nice and fine. So we got those 10 frequency ranges, but they're all in an octave. So octave means that this first band covers the 31 to 63 hertz. And then the next one covers this next frequency band and so forward. And you can probably see that the frequencies doubles and doubles and doubles. And this means that if you take this and plot this into a logarithmic frequency uh, curve set, then you can, then you have automatically a uh, yeah, a logarithmic uh, frequency analyzing tool. And you can also imagine if we take this filter and take a signal, whatever it is, audio um, detector or amplifier or something, some signal and put it through here and the output just to a voltmeter or anything with a dB scale. And then you can dial this to linear mode. That means we don't have any filters. And there's a tiny little adjustment screw through each of the holes. And if you turn this on or off, this is the little trimmer. You turn this trimmer on for all the different modes. So now you can fine tune the level for each. So they are exactly right. And now when you have calibrated whatever frequency it is, for zero dB, and then you can go to all the different frequency bands. You have a 10 band spectrum analyzer, actually. So you read out on your power meter or level meter, volt meter, any dB meter, right? And there you go, with all the different frequencies. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? I found a um, block diagram in the manual that shows this uh, the switches and the the trimmers this switch on and off so you can easier see what's uh, going on inside this filter oh here it is yeah the made in denmark yay and i think we got some different screws here that is probably for mounting somehow Maybe you want to have it standing or just lying flat. I haven't yet figured that out. I don't want to scratch it or anything like that. I really, really like this compact. Super, super heavy. Oh, we got those two little screws here on the side. So there's probably a little handle or something like that. The connectors here. You need a little bit of a special connector, but I've cheated a little bit. You know what you can do? <laughs> you can just use those 
silly old DC connectors here. They work pling, perfectly fine. And then we can put some signals through this thing. Clickety clock, easy, easy. So let's try and uh, look a little bit here on my scope. I'm just using the scope as a spectrum analyzer just for just for the fun of it. It's <laughs> just because we can do it in many different ways, but this is just one way. So here is the eight kilohertz range. And then we take the next one, and I'm using average mode so we can see a little bit of the previous when I'm changing the ranges and that is of course the highest and then the linear mode it should be uh, flat all the way can you imagine in 1966 using this one as a manual frequency analyzer You can also detect harmonics with this one, of course. When you know what you have, if you have a one kilohertz signal, let's go for one kilohertz here. So now we are here, right? And then we should probably change the start and stop frequencies. If I change this stop to five kilohertz, for example, then we are, it's easier for us to see what's going on in here because we have linear, linear sweep on this oscilloscope spectrum analyzer. It's annoying. You can't change that, by the way. Well, that's 500 hertz. And all the different uh, ranges, they, of course, works perfectly fine for this one. Yeah, but you... I'm inputting a noise, a broadband noise source as my input from a signal generator. And uh, what I'm doing here is I also set the bandwidth of the noise to 50 kilohertz. If you set this to 500 megahertz or something crazy, then the energy level you will have left in this uh, wanted frequency band will be close to zero. And that is, by the way, why this internal signal generator is completely useless for this, because there is no way to change the bandwidth. So when you enable its noise modes, it's just from zero to 500 megahertz. And then there is nothing left but just some crazy uh, background noise. And also, by the way, uh, higher frequencies, really, really higher frequencies they just go straight through this and create all sorts of uh, crap. So this is, of course, only used for this. The audio range plus a few hundred kilohertz, probably. Uh, you can't come with megahertz. Many megahertz, then it's obviously not going to work, right? Maybe everybody's thinking, when, when will he open this one? and see what is inside. And I think we want to do that. See, when we are analyzing really, really low frequencies, this is 125. <laughs> you can see it will take a little bit of time because you need more data in this uh, frequency range. It's really nice and sharp and also very flat on the top. This is only noise due to this method, but they are really nice and, and fine and flat at the top. It's just really not super visual with this uh, method. I'm sorry about that. You can, of course, show a nice little curve from the manual that shows uh, all the uh, 10 different uh, curves where you can see they are equally 
uh, spaced and nice and flat. The, and uh, the fun thing is they didn't use uh, super uh, super uh, good adjustment for the level of each of the bands. You can see tiny little height uh, level uh, differences on this sweep from the manual. So that's a little bit funny. They didn't try to do it uh, perfect, perfect. So let's enjoy the internal parts of this fantastic filter. Yeah, we can't really see the trimmers you access from the front because those are not the trimmers we see right here. Those will be some other trimmers because they are mounted down there. And then we got some film capacitors, resistors. We got really, really big, hefty inductors here, and they are multi tapped with a lot of wires coming out of each of these. We got some numbers written on them, and everything here is it's A1600. That will be the core material. It's probably the same for. No, this one is a 24, 22, I don't know, we can't see exactly what that is. And then we got three smaller ones, so that's obviously for higher and higher frequencies, and then the inductors just gets uh, smaller. We got a lot more trimmers here. Oh, we even got a little extra inductor right there with a lot of extra wires coming out of it main this is beautiful and this switch is three decks right there and then three more decks down there i don't know if we can find any um original sales price or um, the year span this device here this unit was manufactured i really would love to know because it is really really beautiful and this is a good example of this unit in super super mint quality we got some this is just a circuit board number there's of course another circuit board uh down there so i will of course put a link in the description to a manual about its use so you can read a little bit more about this <laughs> this is nice ah, damn it's heavy so anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you had a little bit of fun. If you got any questions or comments or something like that, please keep them coming. Yeah, I better put this back together. And I will, of course, set up something with a PC and sound card and all that and get some nice scare, nice sweeps. But for now, it was just more fun just to get the, the scope running. Oh. They over tighten this one, so it's a little bit bent. Oops, be careful. All right, thank you for watching. See you, bye bye. That's difficult to assemble this. Why are you so difficult? No luck. But it has to be this way. It was not this way. Hmm. I give up.